Let's go ahead and start that recording now. Great. Hey, she it's good to see you. Uh, today's May 23rd, 2016. Uh, and today we're talking about relevant score. So right around this time, um, we were just talking right before the call is of a new funnel that we're rolling out. And what it really does is it really offers and adds more value to an upfront conversation really before people opt in. So here's what we've decided to do just to explain what we always like to do, and I just feel it's fun to share this with the world and customers and students, we like to show you the things that we're working on. Did it work? Did it not work? We're just very open and transparent, right? So let me give you kind of a little history lesson very, very, very quickly. This is very, very important to relevant score, by the way, because we match relevant score, all these other dominoes really start to fall. So I started going out to these masterminds, you know, these places of 10, 15, 20 people that uh, we'd all you know curate together they'd ask us for ideas and they'd ask us ideas on uh, they'd ask me ideas on how they're running facebook ads so i'm like okay how can i um uh because i'm repeating myself a lot how can i have someone watch some videos so that at least they get the concepts because i'm happy to build a relationship that way i'm just repeating myself a lot and checky you know this bugs the crap out of me is i love to help people but when i get the same question over and over and over i'm like there has to be a more efficient way where people can get their answers and then I can answer more complicated questions. So that's where social media ad genius really came through. Now we had social media ad genius 1.0, you know, that covered a lot more of what buttons do you hit where on Facebook to make the strategy work. And then we really revise it. We watch students go through the process. We watch the entire process. And we found that it's very interesting that when you send daily emails and say, hey, here's a little task. If all the tasks are bunched up check, even if they're five minutes a day, if you have 25 tasks that you've set aside and you said you'll do later, 25 times five, that math gets really big. People get overwhelmed and they stop. Yeah. So overwhelm is a really important point. Yeah. So what happens is we create a digital product and we give people access. Shecky, you've worked with me this entire time. We documented literally everything that we did step by step. And Social Media Ad Genius 2.0 was much more about the strategy. And it is about the strategy. Oh, yeah, and here's where the buttons are. And oh yeah, here's where the buttons are basically means the buttons move all the time. But if you know where the strategy is, like a spark plug on a car, you know, you know generally where to look. It's not a big deal versus training on a button and then the button moves. So what we found, Jack, and you know this because you've talked to students, what we found is lots of people would purchase our, uh, our digital products like Social Media Ad Genius. Uh, we have a very low refund rate. You know, sometimes people will just buy and refund. Other people will implement it. And then for some reason, some people just don't implement they just, they got the book, they got the binder, it doesn't work. So Shecky and I and uh, Nick, we all sat around and we really thought about, you know, how can we really better serve people? And then that's when we did the group coaching, right? That's the first time that we did um, a group coaching where we had 15 people that came together and we offered, okay, everything that we trained in the video, if you haven't taken action in that, then let's do it in a group and we'll walk you step by step through the entire process for six weeks. Group coaching was fun. Um, we did, I think, eight or nine of them, I think, total, um, by the time the whole thing ran through. And what we started to find is people got a lot of help over those six weeks, but then when we would leave, they, you know, life gets in the way, things would change. So we've spent a lot of time thinking about, okay, how can we better improve our conversations with students, right? To make sure we're all on the same page because people use words like tripwire, landing page, we say welcome page, like a lot of stuff exactly. The second, uh, the second thing is if we can really understand and we're speaking a common language, each part of the funnel is quantifiable. That scares people because we talk about numbers, but really numbers justify if we're doing the right or wrong thing. Well, right or wrong, it was very objective. People don't know, okay, Kurt, numbers, right or wrong, I don't even know where that is. Okay, so if we could figure out a step-by-step -step process and give people numbers on each step, we could talk about where are people stuck. We could say, hey, here are the numbers that are with this, like step number six. Here's what you need to do and here's what you need to change. Here are videos on how to do it. Here, If you don't like videos, you can read a PowerPoint on what to do or we also have support options like, you know, ring a friend or what we call ring a genius. And what's really interesting, Shecky, is, you know, people can log in on their own, right? In a regular training product. Some people take action, some people don't. It's just like a gym membership. But sometimes when you hire that professional trainer who you have an appointment with at eight o'clock every Monday, 
it sucks to go, but you made a commitment to yourself and someone else. The interesting thing is only you're going to benefit. The personal trainer doesn't benefit because you already gave you the money. It's actually a disconvenience to them because you're going to show up and waste their time. But uh, for the most part, you're paying them for results. So as and the reason I tell the story to everybody as well, too, it kind of demonstrates some of the support options we have for people like yourself now. But look at your customers as well, too. A lot of people just feel that a digital product will, A, make them rich tomorrow, and B, serve their audience. Jackie, do you want to, will you talk about for a minute serving the audience? Because this all relates to relevance score. For, so for this to all happen, we're changing our funnel in a way, which you'll see here shortly, that we want to make sure that only people who want to engage with this, it's highly relevant content for them. Those are the people that we can help the most. I'm not looking for 10,000 brand new customers where 9,000 people don't use it. I'm looking yeah. for a select amount of customers who really use it. Would you mind touching on that point so we can jump into relevance score? Yeah, and so, I mean, obviously, I haven't exactly seen the funnel that you're talking about. So just from the standpoint of concept, the word that you're really looking for is congruency, right? And I just, yeah, I mean, I, I just got off the phone with one of our students, and uh, I'm not going to mention any names. Great guy. Uh, no name but dropping. They have... They're trying to do a lot of things, right? So they're they're they've got their main business, but then there's another like little Kickstarter thing they've got going on that sort of plays on people's emotions to help them with their main business because it employs people over here, and then they've got this you know uh, affiliate play that what you want to do, and you know this went on for like 20 minutes, right? Like just kind of trying to lay this all out for me, and by this point, like my head is spinning, spinning, and I finally said to him. What is what's your, what's your main USP? What's your main unique selling proposition, right? Because we, you know, we were talking about Uber just as an example, and Uber is a lot of things, right? It employs a lot of different people. It's an app. It does all things. But at the end of the day, if you ask somebody what Uber is, it's like, oh, it's just a way to get a ride anywhere pretty easily. It's a pretty simple description. Like that's their USP, right? You don't have to pay expensive prices for a cab. You've got an app that somebody just shows up. It's all on GPS. Everything is documented. Your form of payment's already in there. It's just boom. It's just a really easy way to just grab a ride from one part of town to the next. Super easy with even more ease and convenience and less expense than a taxi cab. Okay? So everybody knows what it is. And so when we finally dug down to the USP of this company, and we started saying, okay, what are the things that those kinds of people are interested in? Like it was very easy to come up with interest clusters, which is one of the exercises within the scale method. And then it's like, okay, hey, if we've got an offer, say in, you know, with uh, let's say a yoga mat, I know we've used that example before, mm -hmm. we obviously are gonna target content about the way yoga mats are made and how, you know, we support people in poor countries and we're, you know, using the replenishable rubber tree to make our mats and blah, blah, blah. But the only people we're advertising are people that have already put their hand up that said, I am interested in yoga. Yeah. Right. Like yeah. why do we want to advertise yoga mats to swimmers? Because they both are into health and fitness. I don't think so. Right. So what you're talking about specifically is congruence. And I think this is where people miss the mark because they start looking at like, well, I want to have this big gargantuan audience, say on Facebook, for example. So if I broaden my audience, then I'm going to be able to encompass all of these people. This is true. But if you're advertising yoga mats to the swimmers in that big audience, what's the point of having that big audience? Right? Like it doesn't really serve you. Because even if you start doing the retargeting and everything, you're going to end up retargeting the people who are most congruent to your message in the first place. So, you know, I know, Kurt, there's an argument here that's like, yes, you don't want the audience too small because, you know, you can get things so dialed in that the audience gets so small that like your frequency gets super high and your expense of, you know, of advertising gets super high. I totally get that. But if you're doing congruence right, and you're using lookalike audiences correctly with correct filters and things like that, you should be able to advertise congruent messaging to, a, to the right audience every single time. You just got to do a little homework first. And it's not even that much homework. It's just kind of putting your thinking cap on a little bit to go, 
Okay, who would be included in this audience that I'm advertising to? And is there anybody in this audience that's not congruent with what I'm about to put in front of them? If you just asked that question, you'd probably be ahead of 90% of the advertisers online. Yeah, you know, there's there's a there's a couple of different things that I want to go over, Shecky. Here is uh, I'm going to talk about congruence and relevance. So, um, Shecky, as you know, I spend a lot of time on my bike. I really enjoy a long ride. Sometimes, you know, I listen to four or five mantras in the morning. If I go for a ride later, I usually listen to a podcast, an educational moment that I can listen to. Uh, you know, an early mentor of mine and a great friend and just brilliant individual, Mike Diller, just recently did a podcast with one of the copywriters from uh, Evan Pagan. Uh, Evan Pagan's team, and I'm trying to think. I uh, can't recall his name off the top of my head. And anyway, with your, it's uh, it's uh, Clemens, Craig Clemens. Yeah, uh, and it was a brilliant interview. So uh, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to look that up here real quick. So just so you guys, can it's see. funny that you mentioned that because that's the next one queued up on my uh, on my smartphone. Oh, really? So yeah. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. The Self Made Man podcast. I'm gonna go ahead and just type this in here real quick. I'm just gonna put the link um, right in here because this is this is the, <laughs> this is really 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 good. You know, out of all the people that I'm that I'm really fortunate that I get to meet, um, what a lot of people have said. You know, all entrepreneurs have their stories. From uh, let's go ahead and put this in here. You know, all entrepreneurs have their stories of how they started. I've never heard an entrepreneurial story of hey, I started this business. It was highly successful. Um, yeah, never had any problems, right? Lots of people are like, look, I made some great money because I figured this thing out and then I lost it all and then I had to figure it out again and then something happened. Well, basically what they talk about here is they really talk about creative copy and how to talk to one person. Now, we talk about this a lot in our training. But I want to I want to I want to peel back the layers of the onion. I really want you to think about this because what I'll do is if you're watching and recording or save this link and come back to the link like tomorrow, you'll see a link where I'll take you over to that preview video of scale. It'll probably be like 20 or 25 minutes, but I'll walk you through this whole thing. And what happens is is literally you can scale your business like this, but you have to make sure that you're starting this right, right? Otherwise, it's non-foundational and the whole thing falls apart. So let's talk about. Um, how the how the interwebs really started to attract that these guys were making 10, 20 million dollars a year. Mike was doing the same thing. Is not this one weird trick to hit this button. They figured out who their avatar was. They became very clear. So every time that they wrote an email, they only focused on one person. Shecky does a good job reminding me of this when we're doing presentations. It's like, remember, we're talking to one person. But they get really clear, not just the age, not just the demographic. They think about what does this person wear? How tall would they be? What skin tone do they have? Like what, what does their hair look like? So they can really envision that when they're writing that ad, they are writing a note to that person. And what would happen is, is they talk about in this interview how they really refine the process. Now what happens is, is when you really refine the process and you know who you're talking to instead of like, hey guys, hey everybody, hey, here's what we're doing. People will read your ad and say, oh my goodness, they're talking directly to me. Now, let's just go with the basic fact of targeting that right avatar. And this supersedes, you know, just saying, you know, the age range and the gender. We're really getting focused on who that avatar is. Now your writing becomes easier because you're having a conversation with someone not thinking, what do I have to write next to say everything to a big audience? It's what everybody does. You want to give it that personal touch. So who is that specific person that you write this to? Now, this has been proven in decades. Ogilvy's done this in newspaper articles, like some large, great ad campaigns. Some of the best ad campaigns, they speak directly to you. So this has been proven over and over and over, right? Now what's happening is Facebook and Google are proving out what a lot of, destri- uh, what a lot of direct response marketers, good ones, already knew. And it is eliminating all of the shit that's out there. Now, with the algorithms, Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, we cover this all in scale, the only thing that they care about, the only thing they care about, they don't care about your money. They don't. They don't care about how much money you spend, maybe unless you're Disney. But when I say they don't care about money, how much money they spend, we've spent $700,000, $800,000 a before, um, you know, with the client, and we just, very difficult <laughs> to, to find customer support on any of those platforms. 
What they want to do, and this is you can look this up on the interwebs underneath legitimate websites. Um, the only thing that Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, and Twitter wants to do is they want to make sure that when their ad, when the users who click on an ad, it's highly relevant where they land. Does it help answer their question or help complete that intrigue of, hey, this is giving you my answer? Is it congruent? Is the ad congruent? So what happens is, is it's been proven over years that if we write copy just to one person, it works very, very well. These social sites in Google, we're really talking about just one person going through the experience of our funnel. So when they see an ad, we want to make sure that when they click on it, it is highly relevant to them. It's going to be highly relevant to them if you focus on them and not everybody else. So here's what happens. Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, the Twitters, it's all the same way. If your relevance score is high, Facebook's the only platform that gives you a relevance score. There are quality scores you don't really see as well on, uh, on Google. But if people click on your ad, that gives you a high click-through. When people click on your ad, that's called a click-through rate. The higher the click-through rate, the more people are interested. Hey, I want to click through. I'm interested. So that shows interest to the click. If it's relevant, people will click on your ad and stay there. You honestly don't give a shit if a thousand people click on your ad. Because if a thousand people click on your ad and they just leave, they're worthless. But if a hundred people click on your ad, even if it costs you a little bit more, but they all stay on your page, that's what Google and Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn want. They want highly qualified people to go to your page. So what do we do? We focus on our avatar first. Second thing is, is we're going to produce content that we're going to focus on the relevance score on Facebook first. We're going to find out with our avatar what works the best <coughs> to generate the best relevance score. See, most marketers are trying to get, how do I get the lowest lead on Facebook? It's a very short-term game. If you're really focusing on that one avatar, I mean, check, you see this all the time because you see people skip this step. They're like, I don't need to run a like campaign. Yeah, you do. You want to figure out your relevance. You want to get your you want to get your relevant want to get your relevant see your relevance is we were working with a client these guys are brilliant um, they help doctors and essentially what we're doing is we were getting uh, we were getting twenty two dollars a lead to this one market it's like wow it's just to get a thousand leads at twenty two dollars or you know twenty two dollars we're gonna spend twenty two grand <laughs> like it, wow and it's hard to test unless you can really get a thousand leads into a funnel right. So we have to talk about how do we improve our cost per click? Well, our relevance score is five. Either we're not connecting something with the advertising, we're not connecting with the avatar, qualities or the, the relevancy scores are really low. So we tried a different angle. Now we get leads for 38 cents from $22 because it's a different, it's a different avatar. It's a little bit different funnel. We widen the funnel just a little bit so we can get a lot more people in here and we can test through our retargeting and emails. But what do you think is more profitable? To, what do you think is better beneficial to test with the client? One lead for $22? Or what does that add up to? 40, 80, or 88 leads, roughly. One lead or 88? What do you think is better to test out in the funnel? I, I pick 88. 88. <laughs> By the just way, the reason, one of the reasons we have those 88 leads is because the relevant score of our light campaign is 10. When we do a boost post, our relevant scores are 9 to 10. When yeah. we do a boost post and it runs to an article, we now, uh, we now retarget um, those people into a webinar. Shecky, you're going to love this because we verified the numbers four times because we didn't believe it. When we retarget qualified people onto those articles, we then retarget those people who read the articles to a webinar. Now, I know you don't run a lot of campaigns with us. You do a lot of consulting with us and a lot of coaching. But what would be, you've heard me talk about prices before, what would be a good price per opt-in? We're retargeting, remember, so it's going to be a little bit more expensive, but if you remember like Social Media Ad Genius, if we retarget to a webinar, what's a good cost to retarget to a webinar? Uh, to get somebody on a webinar, I would say, you know, probably in the 2 to $10 range would be a good number for getting somebody on a webinar. Yep, typically you're right. We're anywhere from four to eight dollars, and we're typically doing a retargeting, a right retargeting campaign for a client. Shecky, dollar thirty-five opt-ins for retargeting from an article. Sweet, it's because it's nine and ten relevance. So now, within literally just two weeks, we produce ten thousand leads. 
We have lots of options, but it's all relevant. That's the whole, that's the whole game. So many people are like, if I could just get a cheap opt-in, if I could just send it right to a landing page and they miss the entire scale method. This is why I'm so passionate about the scale method. Cause it's like, look, if you do these basic foundations and I don't care how you do it, you can watch a video, you can watch an hour training, you can watch one of these blabs, you can read a PowerPoint, you can text Shecky, you can call Ashley. Like <laughs> we want to give you options because I mean, we've seen it work lots of times. I mean, Shecky, you've talked to a lot of our students. How many people focus more on it's not like meaning the back end of their product or the landing page before they ever test relevancy score? Well, it's it, it's a problem because, like you say, people are focused on the wrong things, and it's interesting they don't they don't even know oftentimes the questions to ask because they'll start saying stuff like, "Well, how much should my click through rate should be? How much should my cost per click be?" But when you started talking about relevant score a minute ago, here, here's what's interesting about that score is that it is a metric that is kind of a conglomeration of other important metrics. So your click-through rate affects it, but the interesting thing when you factor in that stick rate of whether somebody is staying on your ad or on your article or whatever you drove them to, right, that's a really, really good indicator obviously of relevance. So yeah. it's not just you being, let's say a good citizen with Facebook, right? If you look at your own relevance score in a way to your own judgment of yourself as an advertiser, your own rating of yourself as an advertiser, that's probably the most important measurement you should be looking at, right? Because you're yeah. saying, am I getting good clicks and are they sticking on my clicks, mm -hmm. right? I can't give you and I know you can't either, Kurt. We can't give any of our students a, really a better metric than that. And the, the cool thing about that is because companies like Facebook, which I agree with you, they're not that concerned about money and they are concerned really about user experience. The good news about that is they're going to reward the advertisers that are working towards the higher relevance scores. So, Absolutely. you know, there is, now I'm not a, a data programmer, algorithm guy or anything like that, but it's very clear to us. We see that people with higher relevant scores have easier times getting ads approved. They have faster approval times. They oftentimes will get cheaper clicks versus another advertiser with a slightly lower relevant score, probably advertising in the same niche to similar audiences and things like that. So it's not only uh, they're going to reward advertisers that create a good experience for the for the population that comes to that website. And to an extent, as a result of that, they're going to penalize the ones that are not quite as up to snuff as the good guys. So I, I love this topic, Kurt. Like when, when you said, hey, relevance score is more important than CTR. It's like, yes, I want to talk about this because this is awesome. And it's just like it's a topic that I don't think a lot of people really focus on. And, and Google with their quality score, it's, 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 very, it's a very similar concept to what Facebook's doing. They just use a different name. But most no. of the major advertisers now are getting this, and it's it's hardwired into the programming, into the way the 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 buying of media works on those platforms. Yeah, I want you, I want you to think about because we you know we talk about a lot about Facebook pay per click, and we talk some, about some about Google and LinkedIn and Twitter. Here's something I really want you to focus on, and you, you know Jesse, you know a friend of mine, Jesse Jamison, he talks about this all the time. You really got he's been online for 15 years to really understand where the future is going. You really have to look at the past. And you have to look where are people moving and what are they doing? You know, someone who used to work for Google inside the, like the artificial intelligence to then moving, you know, over into something like with Facebook and knowing what this person worked on in Google and seeing what they're doing over at Facebook. So let's talk about a little bit of history here for just a minute. When the interwebs was really started and people started selling these banner ads, well, what they started doing, it was like, hey, and you can still do this with some sites. Hey, can I buy this banner at the top of your website? I'll buy it for an entire month, right? They, no one ever guarantees clicks. You never know what's going to come in. They're like, I think I've tracking maybe set up this before really Google Analytics was as proficient as it is now. But hey, it's about a mommy blogger site. And if you want to buy a banner, it's like $200 for the month and see what happens. 
And you were only dependent on the traffic that came to that one site. Well, then what started to happen, it became automated. It became more and more automated. And then what started to happen is Google's like, okay, well, we can, we can actually aggregate content. So we know if this site is for mommy bloggers, we know to only run these type of ads on this site. And they created a revolutionized, a revolutionized network where it was placement and for search terms to basically, it would be like, oh, okay, you want to advertise on these sites. The websites would basically say, hey, look, Google called AdSense. Hey, I'm willing to put your code on my site and Google, you serve up who you think the best traffic is. So it got a little bit more ingrained to the user experience automatically. Now, if you're really gonna sort that much content, you gotta have computers do it. Humans aren't gonna do it, it's gonna take way too much time, too many different personalities, just has to be an algorithm. So if you go from just buying banners on a site that you think could be targeted to your audience, to Google then now knowing because you put that code on your site, Google now knowing, oh, we know when traffic goes to each site, so we know if people stay there longer, if they leave right away. They're using all these calculations to determine, did somebody actually like your content? Well, Facebook's the very first to, to give you a score that shows you, yes, we believe your content was, is relevant. No one's ever done that before. And all of a sudden it pops up, there's some articles around it, but most people, they're not paying attention to relevance score. So if you look at history, let's rewind history for just a second. These mommy blogger sites, depending on who visits them, Facebook doesn't have to advertise to them, but the only way that Facebook knows if that mommy blogger site is relevant is if you put a little Facebook pixel, same thing with Google, right? Or if you use Google Analytics, if you put that little pixel on your site, now, when you run ads, Facebook knows, did they click on the ad and then go to the website and leave? Did they stay on the website? How long did they stay? Did they scroll down? Did they move their mouse across the screen? Did they stay there for five minutes? Did they click off to another screen? That next screen, did it have a conversion pixel on it? Where did they go? What did they do? What was their experience? So there's an algorithm that tracks all this. So the old way of doing ads was, hey, let's just spend some money, target this demographic like a billboard, like a banner on a random site. <laughs> and now what Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter are basically saying is they're like, hey, look, we know the best targeting. We know where to run the best ads. If you write the best ads and people click on them and you add value, then we will send you more people over to your site because more people want to use this. See, what happens is, is Facebook, they have, a, they have unlimited inventory. They really, really, really do, right? There are lots of impressions. There are lots of different people buying ads. And it's not about are you willing to pay more than your competitor to get your ad shown. That's the old school game. It used to be, Shecky, you remember this? You go into Google Ads, you'd be like, okay, I'm going to bid $5 a click. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Dang it, I got three clicks. Someone's outbidding me. I'm going to bid $10 a click. Oh my goodness, I got 100 right. clicks. I didn't know I was going to spend $1,000. Dang it. Hang on, now I'm going to lower that bid and you never knew. And then they got optimized bidding like Google and then they would adjust the bids for, for you. Well, now with Facebook, Facebook's allowing us to do the targeting. We get really focused on the targeting. We get really focused on the relevancy score. Facebook's going to want to serve our content. And if they want to serve our content, that means people, we, are, we are demonstrating to Facebook that people are landing on our content and consuming our content. We get preferential treatment when it comes to cost and placement. Please remember this. Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, and Twitter, they have a lot of ad space. They don't have to fill banners on a site. It's not like, oh, we have to hit our quota and make sure this banner is at the top of our site. They don't have to take their mo your money. Here's what's critical to these social media sites. If you enjoy going to Facebook and you have a good experience or Twitter on a regular basis and you see the content that you like and when you click on stuff, it's relevant to you, you'll use that platform. As soon as it becomes like a MySpace in the old days where they have these flashing ads, you click on stuff, it's not relevant to you and it puts you on this website that takes you to some other place, you're going to have a bad experience. You're going to remember you saw that through that platform and you're less likely to use that platform. So it's in the platform's best uh, it, it really, it's in their, in, in their best interest, not to charge you quadruple for your ads. It's in their best interest to serve ads that are highly relevant. They compensate you with lower cost. 
because if they have higher relevance, more people will come, more people will come to that medium like Facebook or whatever and click on more ads down the road. Now, Shecky, I know we've said this before, and I kind of go on this whole long tangent about relevant score. You know, lots of people tell me though, Kurt, my cost per clicks are four dollars. And I go, Great, what's your like campaign cost? And they go, No, Kurt, we're talking about running traffic to a webinar. So I'm sending it over to a landing page. Yeah. How much is your cost per like? Kurt, we're not running any cost per like. Yeah, you doing any boost post with content? No, like Kurt, I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm sending this over to my website. Jackie, how many people do you see skip this step? The whole one I just talked about, the whole history I just talked about, this algorithm that is smarter than us silly humans. How many people do you see skip really the first three steps that we have inside the scale method? It's hovering near 100%. <laughs> just, <laughs> except, except for the students that we just kind of go like, like, let's beat you over the head with this. Um, it's interesting because I, I, I loved your comment about Jesse and, and some of the evolution of, of online advertising. Uh, I, I mean, something that kind of came across my desk the other day that was more about how, about this maturation of, of online advertising and how there's so many more advertisers out there. And we, obviously we see it because you know, we're helping people come into the fold all the time. Uh, but as there's more and more advertisers, at the same time, there's this really weird irony going on. Because what happens is there's more and more tools that are available, right? Like the artificial intelligence and, and pixel strategy and targeting and things like that. So unless you learn this stuff, it becomes a little more uh, daunting, a little bit more confusing to be able to tackle it. However, you know, what happens is people just go, like what you said, well, I'm just going to run traffic to a webinar and, you know, it's the old, like they think, like KISS, right? Keep it simple, stupid. But they're missing the, the whole point of what we're talking about in this particular conversation that we're having today. And to their, the, the irony is that it is really pretty simple to just work, to just get your basics and understand some basic things about audience and congruence and get that relevance score up so that all the other sophisticated technology can do what it's supposed to do. And yet human beings being the stubborn creatures that they are, just can't seem oftentimes to get it through their thick skull that it just takes a little bit of proper prep work. And and it, it hurts them. There's no question that it hurts them. And then there's, we see it all the time. There's like new people coming in. Hey, I'm going to do this. We're going to get cheap clicks. We're going to do all this. And they haven't done that initial little, just that little tiny piece of foundational work. And and they just get chewed up. They get eaten up alive uh, because there's just so many people trying to do that. I think. And so I think the evolution is great because it gives us all these wonderful tools. But the smart money is going to the people that will do that little bit of extra. They understand really the bigger picture. It's more of a, a holistic approach, right? To yeah. say, hey, look, if we do the foundational work now, we're not building our house on some sandbar. You know, we're laying a proper foundation. Yeah. And now we can build to the sky as we need to because we know we've got the, the foundation in place. It really comes down to if you really think the natural progression of building a relationship. That's the whole thing. A lot of the direct response marketing stuff, it still works. But what doesn't work anymore is the stuff that people got annoyed with, like those flashy banners. You're the 10,000 video you know, visitor. Click here. Here's the one weird trick. Here's the one button thing that will make you rich. Here's the one thing that Dr. Oz won't tell you. The other thing is, is a lot of people don't realize Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Twitter, they can be held liable if they're selling something on their platform that could be a scam or dishonest. So they have lots of really times very clear rules because thousands of different situations that either an algorithm or they have to make a decision on. So show that you have a high relevance score and that people are consuming and they like your content. All these ad platforms are saying, okay, I mean, they're watching their videos or they're going to their blogs or they're reading their website. As they place more ads, it actually gives you an overall score on your ad account. Because see, here's the thing is so many people are used to, let's just, let's just go through the history real quick, direct mail. Shecky, you've done some direct mail in the past. You've owned multiple different businesses. Direct mail is you're sending three to five times to each person, right? Over the course yeah. of anywhere from 30 to 45 to even 60 days, depending on what industry that you're in. But that's multiple contacts. 
I mean, you can buy a list and if you're like a realtor, send to a different, you know, a certain neighborhood, but to get really specific targeting depends on what you're looking for. But again, these people could throw it in the trash, whatever they want to do. Cable, that's a really wide audience or TV is a wide audience, but Facebook, you can target, if you have a yoga studio, 30 miles or 20 miles square radius of your exact avatar. Well, there are a lot of yoga studios. This isn't the yellow pages. Facebook isn't like people aren't on Facebook looking for a close yoga studio. I guess sometimes they have technology that's now working on that. But you want to educate the yoga community around you. You want to give them some features, some benefits, and not just, hey, here's a $10 off coupon. But I know, Shecky, like the place that you go to yoga, they sell, uh, they, they, they still sell those sea berry bowls and stuff like that, don't they? Yeah, there's bowls and uh you fruits walk, and you walk in there clothing really, and mats and all kinds of you can buy whatever you want there. so you walk in they're really friendly i know that the, yeah. the whole staff and you have friends there there's now a community there so it's really relevant because people typically in yoga shecky tell me if i'm wrong on this but people typically in yoga like to be around a yoga community and typically aren't doing it all by themselves on a regular basis <laughs> It's funny that you mad. The reason I'm laughing is because I was going back to the comment that you made prior to us starting the recording of this call. And you're just talking about uh, needing help. And, you know, like in Austin, the last few days, it's kind of been like a little cloudy right, and yeah. drizzly and things like that. And I, yeah. you know, living downtown, I mostly take my bike around for transportation. Like, I don't want to drive my car downtown. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And the yoga studio is essentially across the river. And, like, I had people say like, well, you're so into yoga. Why don't you, if it's raining and you don't want to go, why don't you just turn on a YouTube video, put your map down in your living room and just go for it, right? Like you could follow along. And I go, you know, I could, but I just never freaking will. Like I just, there's something about having that coach, about having that just in person and, you know, just being there in person or having that one-on-one, -on -one, you know, I'm in a group, I'm still getting adjustments from the instructor. You know, I'm still getting cues as to, you know, what to move, how to turn, you know, that sort of thing that I know that it's kind of like our coaching calls. All you got to do is show up. That's half the battle, right? Get it on the schedule. Let's go. And on the days when I don't feel like doing anything and I'm just being lazy and I don't ride my bike, whatever, I know if I just get to the yoga class when they start, I'll be fine. It may not be my best session ever, but I'll sweat. I'll get some good exercise, you know, and I will feel a hundred times better when I get done. So there's there's something about that. I don't know, just like that in person, I, like it's human nature, I guess. We just need somebody to to really push us along. We have a really hard time doing it ourselves. Right there. That's why you have, depends if you have cable or not, 10, 20, 30 different news stations that all say the same thing. It just depends on who it's being delivered from. Check, you can go to mm -hmm. lots of different, I mean, let's be honest, there are lots of different yoga places, and, but it's the way that you feel and the way that you engage with other people. See, the thing is that a lot of people really get confused about with all these other social media networks. Yes, good, uh, fresh new content is really good, but... It doesn't have to be your own personal idea every single day. You could be sharing a thought, how you agree or disagree, and that could be through news or comment on other articles. But see, the thing is, what people are looking for is they're looking to be led with a subject expert. So for instance, maybe you're into coaching memory, right? Always telling people, like we have a, you know, we have a friend that's an internationally renowned memory expert. And you know, we have a friend and he could either do, well, hey, opt into this page. Let me show you how to improve your memory. Go to this page and, and improve memory. Go to this page, opt in to improve your memory. Oh, by the way, retargeting. Go back to this page and opt in for memory. Memory is important. Or what he can do is he can say, let me tell you what is the earliest known uh, recorded spot in history where someone would take a walk on a date where, and they name the person, where this person would take a walk on a daily basis and quickly learn how to memorize over 20 items instantly and be able to recall them. Let me tell you the story. Or saying, no. here's how you memorize a deck of cards, front and back, one deck. He can do five front and back. There's a certain way that he has an association in his brain. And he tells people, he goes, look, this isn't because I have a special talent. I have a system, a step-by-step -step system. So what he does is he speaks around the world and he speaks for 45 minutes on stage 
But before he goes on stage, this is brilliant. Shecky's heard me tell this story. Before he goes on stage, he walks around and he shakes other people's hands. And he introduces himself. So let's say it's a crowd of 200. He'll definitely introduce himself to at least 100 people. So then what he does when he gets on stage, he goes, hey, everybody, it's great to see you here. Um, and now he's at a live event. He has relevance, right? Because the, all the people at the event are there to see some other speakers, but he's there as well too, so it's inside of a niche. Then he says, okay, if I shook your hand at any time, if I shook your hand at any time yesterday, please stand up. 100 people stand up. And he looks around and he goes, look, if I call your name, I should say when I call your name, if I didn't forget, he always does that and people laugh. He goes, when I call your name, please sit down. And he'll go around the room and he'll point and he'll say everybody's name and they'll sit down. And people right off the bat are like, wow, wow. And he goes, look, 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 I'm not that smart. I am highly disorganized. But what I can tell you, this is all a system and everybody can also do that. In the next 45 minutes, I'm gonna show you exactly how I do this. And at the very end, I'll, I'll give you some options if you'd like me to help you out. It's great marketing and here's the reason why. He's shaking people's hands up front. That could be like a campaign, that could be a video for you. And then he says, hey, because uh, they're all interested in the same thing. Hey, if I shook your hand, please stand up. That's like having a like campaign that now you're running a highly relevant article to because you really thought through your avatar. Now when people are wowed because of the free content you demonstrated, and this is the reason that we're doing our new funnel, Shecky, where again, I'll put a link in here um, about tomorrow morning, where people will be able to watch a 20 or 30 minute scale training of how they can scale their own traffic. It's all for free. Like there, there's no opt-ins, you go to YouTube, you may see a retargeting ad from that, but if at any time, if they want, they're like, wait a minute, how do I scale my business? I'm stuck on point number six. Hit a button, it'll eject you on over to our live presentation. Uh, and you can register, we'll do a live presentation once a week. But because he demonstrated value up front, because people were wowed, because people got to listen to his content up front, then people are interested in talking to him later at the very end when it comes time to invest with him. If he was just to get on stage and say, hey, you guys, look, I'm an international memory expert. I know that I can help you out. Ow, I have C's, discs, tapes. Uh, yeah, check I'll be with you in a minute. Hang on a second. I have, uh, uh, yeah, there's some stuff. Oh, you didn't buy Oh, by the way, sorry, Shecky, you didn't buy. Hey, could you come back to my page? Come back, like, may, I have some stuff to buy. And it's like this, right? Yeah. And it's funny, I was just talking to someone who had, I think they did three million or three and a half million last year in a coaching business. And I was just talking to somebody who was running their account. They just wanted somebody to audit and review their account. And I go, they're opting in for the seven steps on how to make $100,000 from a webinar. Great. But as soon as they opt in, they say one of the most important things of a webinar is you got to learn sales. Buy the product down below for $97. I go, I, I don't know who she is. She was saying that she was going to first give me tips for how to make you know, 10, you know, 10K on a webinar. But now she's saying I have to learn about selling. It's not really congruent. But I don't really know who she is. And then she wants me to buy something for $97. Like, well, that's that's the bigger issue is, you know, somebody asking for the sale before they've really given the value. Yeah, you're not giving away the farm, it. but these relevant scores, it's more, people ask her, what do you think I can get an opt-in cost for? I don't know if we can get a relevant score, we can get the lower cost per click or lower cost per opt-in. People will say, I know, but what do you think that cost per opt-in is? If I have a 10 relevant score, Shecky, and I'm getting $10 leads, I'm rocking with that all day long because it's highly relevant. Yeah. And I know that I can follow up with these people properly. I'd say, yeah, agree. I'd, I'd say the biggest thing with relevant score, uh, and I think a lot of people miss this, but the biggest thing with relevant score is Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Twitter, they're gonna treat you a little bit better. But remember, you don't have to get everyone's email address. If you qualify the person, a qualified click, this is what we're gonna be doing with our YouTube video where like I said, we give away just a free 20 minute training and you'll see the link posted in here tomorrow, which is watch it. If it's for you, great. We have lots of different support options. You can watch us live. If it's not and you got some value from it, great. But if people watched it for over five minutes and they're really getting some value because that's where we would write and jump into content, we can then retarget people to watch another video to say, hey, you've seen some of our presentation, come over and watch the live video. If they wanna join us, great. And if they do, we know that it's highly relevant content, but we're not advertising to people that it's relevant to. And I know, I know, Shecky, we'll get more people to take action. And what I mean by taking action is implementing and, I mean, it's proofs in the pudding because I love to hear the success stories. So I know we're, we're about out of time here, Shecky. Do you have 
anything that uh, you want to mention or comment on relevant score? Um, well, just one thing that I talked about was like, uh, you know, retargeting and that sort of stuff. So, cause th this has come up again today. And the question that came up is like, look, if I have a good relevance score, and so obviously I'm going to retarget. So obviously I'm only retargeting people that clicked on an initial piece of content or whatever. How many times should these people see this? Like, this is a really relevant question. Speaking of relevance, right? And it goes back to, the answer is it goes back to a common phrase in marketing called the rule of seven. And so we know that most people ultimately in order to buy or make any kind of decision at all, probably need around as an average seven exposures. So the next question that got asked was, okay, well then if I send somebody just to a relevant piece of content and then retarget just to my opt-in after that, to my offer or my webinar invite. And the only thing that's happening is the retargeting is just to that. Is that good enough? And the answer is, it could be. Like, would that person see the initial piece of content and then the webinar invite six times? It's certainly possible, depending on the frequency of the ad, right? So then the next question that got asked, and I'm just trying to illuminate a situation here, is that what if I send them to a piece of content and then later they got retargeted to a little bit deeper dive into that content. And then later they got retargeted to something that was a super deep dive. And then maybe on the fourth time around, it went to the webinar invite. I'm like, that's good too. And one of the things I learned, you know, it's like, well, what's better? And then of course, out of my mouth came Kurt Molly. It's like, I don't know. Have you tested it? Yeah, but, yeah. Right? So, the, the only point I'm trying to make is that we know that it's going to take multiple exposures, right? I mean, we're all, there's so much competition for attention online. You may as well be competing in an arena where you're extremely congruent. You have a much higher chance of holding somebody's attention, yeah. even if it's with a repeat message of a webinar invite. You know, people get busy. Look, my phone's right next to me. Maybe I get a text, whatever. I'm sitting here drinking coffee. I mean, I got other things going on even while I'm on a live blab, right? And so there's a constant competition for attention. And I think it's important to make note of the fact that you're just going to have to recognize that you're going to need multiple exposures with your audience to create real results. Doesn't mean you always will but it means just accept that as a probable fact going in. And if you, if you can get people with two or three exposures instead of seven, great, good for you, right? But you're gonna be the exception rather than the rule. Yeah. So I would say just be ready for that and just be ready to test some variations on that theme. Yeah, I just, yeah, I just and at, the at the end of the day, the better relevance score that you have, the better, uh, the better you're gonna be able to scale your business long-term. Now, yeah. what a lot of people do is they will try to run, and they, lots of people do this. Like, you may even do this too. But like, yeah, I always like to say this, but you won't after you know today. What a lot of people do is they, is they figure out, okay, I got to send a bunch of clicks to a website and maybe they'll opt in or maybe they, maybe they get a blog or two or something, but I got to get leads for under $5. You no, know, what you require is leads that purchase. And you just got to make sure that your cost per lead is less than what you're offering in the first 30 days. So maybe you're offering two products and it's $300, great. It just has to be less, right? You just gotta make like 297 bucks. Even if you break even. Now if you break even, you have leads and sales that you can follow up with with other offers. So the name of the game is, if you get highly qualified people first, maybe they didn't like your landing page, maybe they didn't like your blog article. But now because they're qualified, you can retarget them with another piece of content. That's one of the reasons that we really talk about scale is really step seven through 12, we teach you how every single week to improve that lifetime value of the customer. Because you never really lose an opportunity like you do if you only send out seven direct mails. Shecky, you did some real estate. I did some real estate before. Uh, did you ever do a direct mail campaign in real estate to buy houses? Uh, I think I did one. I didn't do it as a matter of course. What's funny is, is we would do them and what would happen a lot of times, people would open it, call, want to know, how did you get their name? How did you know they wanted to sell? It's kind of weird and they freak out. Then they throw it away uh, or put it in a pile that they went through some other day. 
six or seven months later, you get a phone call. Hey, you know what? I was thinking about selling before, but now I'm thinking that would happen all the time because people just get complacent. Now, people may be looking for your internet, for your information now, but life may get in the way, whatever. As Shecky was saying, okay, we got to send people to five to seven exposures, but does it have to be the same exposure every single time? Write this down, circle it, highlight it, whatever. How, this is exactly what the ad platforms want. What I love about the ad platform, Shecky, is they built the ad platform and the advertising second. The platform was really built on, on content first. This is Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, right? Now what's happening is, is they're making sure um, automatically that only the best content gets served on these networks. Set, right? All the bad stuff, people get banned, they get kicked out. And it's not from just having bad copy. It's not from having relevant content. Now, what ends up happening, though, is since you're not targeting irrelevant people or junk people, now you have opportunities on a regular basis to follow up with people. So if you keep a highly qualified click, you want to align with their belief system. Are we agreeing on a subject matter? Or do I require additional documentation to change their belief system? We're having a conversation, but instead of sending people right to an opt-in page, as Shecky said, maybe I do send them to three articles, but if it costs me a dollar to send somebody to a landing page, why would I spend a dollar to each blog, three blogs, the fourth blog, the fourth place being my website, now I'm going to spend $4 to get one click here. Well, a lot of the times if you're aligning the belief system with that very first article, like for example, why it's important to automate your marketing. Well, that's interesting. Now that they've read this, how here are three easy steps that will help automate your marketing. Oh, yeah, because thinking about automated marketing, I recently saw this article on how to automate marketing. Are you effectively automating profits or are you automating losses? Oh, that's a good question. Let me take a look at it because I've already actually been reading about automation. Fourth, there's an upcoming webinar coming up that talks about Auto, uh, marketing automation. Are you automating profits? Are you automating losses? Do you know your numbers? And how far or how much are you willing to pay for your perfect customer? Are you willing to pay $100 for someone who will spend $1,500 with you? Find out the numbers and the answer once you register for the webinar. See, what happens is, is because we took them on this story and this journey and built this relationship, this could be 35 cent clicks because it's so relevant. 35 cents, 35 cents, 35 cents. Now we're at 90, about we're at $1.05. Retarget again, maybe it's 60 cents. Now it's $1.65 to get them to the page. Not a dollar, but these people are so qualified by this point. Your relevancy score stays high. Your registration on your webinar may go down a little bit. You have a little bit higher cost per click, but I bet you the cost per opt-in goes down because it's less expensive, less expensive, less expensive. Now you're asking for a commitment after they've made three other actions. To me, Shecky, I could map this out in my brain. It makes perfect common sense. And I, I don't know any other way to decide, you know, on the blab or again, perhaps people check back the link to take them over to the social training. But you figure out relevancy score, everything else falls into place. Well, and, and kudos to you in, the, in that example. And I don't know if everybody picked that up, but the way that you described that was beautiful because there was, a, uh, there was an indoctrination process happening as a result of a content ascension model, right? So yes, it's a little bit more sophisticated than just slamming people right over to an opt-in page, but the way that you ascended somebody through that, you know, just learning curve and like you say, belief system, and that's why I use the word indoctrination, it's just, it's beautiful when you can do that. And for those of you on the call, like really think about that stuff with your marketing is what, what is it that my prospect has to believe, right, in order for them to participate with me on the level that I, A, I want them to participate with me on, and B, where it hugely benefits them, their life, their business, whatever it is your product message or service does, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but it's like that's starting to get into some deeper psychological stuff, and I know we're out of time, but just a, a great example, Kurt, like that's just, that's awesome. So uh, I'm excited. <laughs> Like I said, go ahead and check back here later. And uh, if you already are a part um, uh, of social media at Genius, I'll just go ahead and put this. I'll actually have the link to the blog article. So why you should care, I'll just go ahead and put this over to the side as well too. 
And then, uh, Shaki, one of the we'll work on is this week is I'll tell Nick to uh, place replace that banner once I have that video up as, as well, too, um, okay. uh, which would be great as well. So, again, thank you, everybody, for being here. I really appreciate it. Remember, if uh, uh, if you want to see any of these recordings left up here, they're also over on YouTube. And being a part of social media and Genius shows you all the strategies and the buttons on Facebook of really how to start advertising on Facebook, how to start scaling your business. And very shortly here, I'll put in a link. Uh, like I said, uh, by tomorrow morning, um, that uh, it'll go to a you know 20, 25 minute video that Shecky, I'm going to show you in just about 30 seconds. Um, that well, you're going to show real, me in about five minutes. I'm going to call you. I need about five sounds, minutes. That sounds perfect. Well, Skype, uh, Skype me because I want to do screen share. Okay, cool. All right, everybody. Well, I appreciate you very much. And uh, if nothing else, like I said, check back here, and we'll let you know about the webinar that we'll have on today, which is going to be another live scale webinar. Um, but uh, we'll give you some of those other details later. So thanks again, everybody. We appreciate you. You all have a great day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.